What does it mean, you must be born again? What it means, in layman's terms, is this. Almighty God created Adam and Eve and the human race for fellowship with him. A human being is a created spirit that lives in a body and has a soul. The soul is considered to be the mind, the will, and the emotion. When a child is conceived, he has a human spirit, and God knows him by name. He has a spiritual relationship with God. God created Adam with what we call a free will, meaning he was able to make decisions for himself and was not God's puppet or robot. God would come and walk and talk with Adam and Eve each evening in the Garden of Eden. Can you imagine going on a friendly walk with God in the evening and watching the sunset? This is the relationship that Adam and Eve had with Almighty God. God told Adam not to eat of the fruit of the tree, of the knowledge of good and evil, because the day you do, you will die. Spiritual life and death are relative to a relationship with Almighty God. And since God is a spirit, that is a spiritual relationship. The same day they ate of the fruit was the last day Adam and Eve walked with God. God separated Adam and Eve from the tree of life, from the Garden of Eden, and the greatest tragedy of all is the eternal separation from the friendly love relationship they had with God. What do we lose when we are separated from our relationship with God? The greatest loss is the experience of His divine love, and there is peace and joy and happiness in His presence. You may think that heaven will be boring, just standing around for eternity, singing, Holy, holy, holy. But that's just not what God had planned for us. He wants us to enter into the divine love relationship with Him, like He has with His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The closer we are to God, the greater our happiness will be. And the further the separation from God, the greater the misery and sorrow will be. Heaven is really where the party is. The joy, the singing, the dancing, and good things to eat. And life and death are relative to our relationship with God for the rest of eternity. Adam died spiritually that day, but died physically at the age of 933 years after the day he was created. And he will be raised from the dead with the rest of humanity to be judged for what he did in life because he knew right from wrong. Those whom are judged to be wicked will be cast into the lake of fire, which is also called the second death or the second separation from God. This is a permanent separation between God and man. God is love and he created mankind for fellowship with him and not just to be tormented in hell or the lake of fire. You might ask, what about the babies that are never born? Or what happens when a child dies? Do they go to hell? Almighty God has a spiritual relationship with every child until he knows right from wrong. The spirits of those that die are with God now. And later their new bodies will be raised from the dead to continue their love relationship with God. When we come to the age of accountability and have a knowledge of what is right and wrong, we are responsible for all the wicked things that we do. We die spiritually and are separated from our love relationship with God. God wants to restore any willing person to have a personal relationship with Him. And He sent His only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to accept the judgment and punishment for our wickedness. So that anyone whom wants to be restored to a personal relationship with Almighty God the Father can be born again spiritually. Restoring that relationship to God is what Jesus said was being born again by the Spirit. This does not mean that we're going to go through a cycle of continuous reincarnation until we become perfect. The human spirit has only one life, an opportunity to be forgiven, and enter into that love relationship with Almighty God. This does not mean that we will be born again in the flesh as another baby, like our first physical birth. Jesus explained that what is born of the flesh, physical birth, is physical, and what is born of the spiritual birth is spiritual. Jesus explained that God sent him into the world so that man would not enter into the second death, but have eternal life. God loves us and is a good God. Jesus was sent to die in our place so that we could be born into a love relationship with God. 
The requirement that God placed on this gift was that we had to believe what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us. And in evidence of that belief, we must turn away from our sin and be baptized in water. This is an outward sign that we believe in the death, burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So by acting on our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we become born again to God and begin our new relationship with Him. It is written that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him should not be ashamed for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved when we ask him to forgive our sin he is faithful and just to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness if you believe in the death burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and want to enter into that love relationship with God you can be born again now by praying if you like follow me as I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ will bring you into that love relationship he has with God the Father you will become born again by the Spirit you can ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit to help you walk closer with God there are none righteous no not one we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Let us pray now together and ask Almighty God to forgive our sin and wash us in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just follow after me in prayer, but pray with your own faith and your own sincerity. Father God, that's right, just pray in faith after me. Father God, I ask you now to forgive all of my sins and wash me in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and make me holy unto you. Baptize me now in the Holy Spirit and give me more power to resist temptations. I acknowledge that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for my sin and is soon to return. I forgive all of those people that I have resented or hated and I receive from you the free gift of salvation. I dedicate my life and commit my spirit to you. I ask you now to keep me strong in the time of testing and help me to stand before the Son of Man. I receive that as done. Amen. Thank you for praying with me, child of God. 